give us an update on Faf. He's making a comeback in international cricket. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's Avinov. Um, he's he's been in the news mainly because Graham Smith commented on Faf um, during the India series, uh, but he also said that Faf seems happy to be playing franchise cricket and. Um, Although he's fit enough to be able to make a comeback to international cricket, they haven't been able to find that balance because they don't know how much time Faf is ready to commit to international cricket. So I think more than anything, it's a communication thing. It's not as much of a of a, a willingness to play international cricket sort of thing. Hey guys, sorry, I'm back. Can you hear me clearly, Aditya? I don't know what is going yeah. on. Uh, the connection, people. the connection, the load shedding, everything in one, just destroying us. But I'm back. Um, yes, so guys, I've been sick. I've been out cold for the, like the last three, four days. Um, really badly at Brad bronchitis. Um, I was, I couldn't move. So I tried to get up to do the shows, and I just couldn't get myself. I couldn't even move out of my bed. So I'm so sorry that we had to go almost dormant for quite some time. But I thought. Let's have an excellent opportunity for us to catch up again, have a show again, and do a QA session. So, how's it, Aditya? Welcome to the show as per usual. Um, I know the whole intro is messed up um, now, so but it doesn't matter. Um, we are back, we are live, and we are we here. Are we are, um, it's fine. <laughs> uh, but I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad you're feeling a bit better. I I have had a lot of experience with bronchitis, and I know that it can be quite debilitating. So. Okay. I feel for you, bro. Yeah, it was uh, terrible. I, I I don't think I've had bronchitis before, actually, to be honest with you. Um, oh, I've, okay. had, I've had bad flus and stuff like that, but I don't think I've had a bronchitis so bad, at least as far as I can remember. Um, so, yeah, it's been pretty hectic. But, okay, guys, let's get into today's show. I'm excited, first and foremost. Um, I want to say congratulations to Marazan Cup. What a what an excellent innings. It's great to see the women play some test cricket. Although not all of them came to the party as we'd hoped. Um, unfortunately, we could see the difference in class and you could see that there was no experience. I think there was like seven debutants or something like that. So it's crazy. Um, nine debutants, though? Nine, nine debutants, yes. Yeah. So yeah, like, Kendall. Yeah. So like, yeah, it's crazy. Be. Crazy to be able to see the woman actually get an opportunity to play yeah. test cricket. I mean, and for Marazan Cup to do what she's done. I mean, no matter what the format is, so, so amazing. Um, so, like, from that perspective, I think it's, it's, it's nice to see. It's unfortunate that we're not going to get maybe an, another opportunity maybe for these girls to maybe right the wrongs that they had for the previous, if they don't do well in this game. Um, so, at least that's, that's something that we're hoping that will change. Um, um, in the future, that we'll play more. I know they will build out for 285, uh, 284, sorry. Um, so, yeah, but it's all because Marazan Cup with some beautiful offside shots, m amazing drives. It, it was a, a fantastic performance from her. She really showed what, what a class cricketer she is. No matter what the format is, she steps up for South Africa. Um, so, I think that's very special and that's something that we need to hold on. What was your thoughts on, the, on some of the game that you got to watch? You could see that England's done it before. Yeah, I mean, you have nine debutants in in one game, and that's going to show. And that also includes a captain. <laughs> so, you know, this 284 is, is still a very good score. And um, Marazan Cap, what a legend. What an absolute legend uh, to be able to, to put on a show like that. Because, yeah. you know, you're playing against more experience, even collectively, right? Like, I think collective experience matters. You know, you can have one or two debutants in... In, in a game or in, in a series and you have the rest of that squad to sort of carry those guys you know but to have nine debutants that's basically the entire team you don't have nine debutants playing you know they they're trying to find their feet and it's it's fair i mean can't blame any of them yeah so yes well done to marathon cup i have to get that out of the way first and foremost because that what that is a great way to start the show 
and as you know like breaking the silence was not only uh, a metaphor or a statement for me myself breaking the silence after a while back it's also breaking the silence from seeing south africa play test cricket again in the women's department so it was really good to see that as well but let's get into the questions we've had a couple on instagram let's start over there i think um i'll start with do you think boucher and his team are watching what england has done to new zealand and that's from Abu Daraj. I don't know how to pronounce this. Abdurrah, Abdurrahman, I think it is. Um, because, yeah, Abdurrahman. So, what's your thoughts on that, um, Aditya? Because, I mean, we know that, but I, I personally, when I look at our Proteus team, I think that Bouch is more settled in the Proteus department with the test arena. I think he understands what style of cricket he wants to play. He's already spoke. He's been quite stern with certain things. Whereas in the other formats, he's a little bit more about, you know, we're testing here, we're trying new things, we're learning new shots, all of these other things. But in test cricket, he seems quite certain and quite stern on the style of cricket that he yeah. wants to play. Um, so, so what's your thoughts on that? Because, I mean, New Zealand has really set the blueprint, I think, for many small nations from a, from a, from a size perspective. I'm not a small nation from a... Because they are quite a colossal team when it comes to heart and it comes to performance and technique and mentality and all of those things. But from a amount of from a country that doesn't have many numbers playing cricket, they're a good example yeah. to South Africa actually on how to get it right. Yeah, they're, they're the epitome of, of how you utilize your resources. You know, and I think every country can learn from that. Because they only have 116 professional cricketers in the country. Yeah, so to build 11 world-class players and make them competitive in all conditions, credit to them. England, brilliant performance. Because remember, they're coming off like a really poor couple of years in test cricket. You know, and uh, they're in that rebuilding phase so to come in. And we can't say that in, in that entire series between uh, England and New Zealand, we can't say that New Zealand played poorly. They didn't play poorly at all. That scoreline is not a reflection of how New Zealand played. It's just a reflection of how competitive that series was. And, um, you know, credit to England. They were they were brilliant. And um, and clearly that, that series victory has Brendan McCullum's blueprint all over it. So if anything, you know, they're going to be, they're going to be formidable opponents. You know, I think three months ago, I would have said that you know South Africa has a solid chance of um, you know of being really competitive in England. Now England's come in with some serious confidence because it's not about the opposition that they defeated; it's that they played the way they wanted to play. You know, I think there's a difference. Like you can win, you can win against another team. Okay, and that's great. But when you play, you play the way you wanted to play. Where you intended to play, that gives you more confidence because mm. then you're confident in your process. You know the outcome is going to be what it's going to be. Yeah, and you can see Boucher's test team is a reflection of him as a person and as a player that he was. You know, it's a, a fighting team, a feisty team that doesn't want to give up. Um, they grind away, and they and they. Can. And then they have some flair players in between, which I'm hoping that's going to continue in the future. I would like to see our younger players play more first-class cricket so they can get into this team. Because I think South Africa is again on the brink of a of a rebuilding phase, I would say again, or finding that next... I wouldn't say rebuilding phase. We, I think we passed that. I think it's about taking the next step, finding the next foundation, you know, adding the... Consolidating the balcony, phase. The pat, uh, yeah, the consolidation phase. Yes, that's a good <laughs> idea. That's a good one. Okay, let's move on. Um, Justin FX, um, he says, Owen Morgan has stepped down as captain due to poor performances. Maybe Pavuma should too. I think that Pavuma, uh, well, if I knew him, I think he would do what's best for the team. Now, that's what I'm hoping. Um, so if he's feeling that he's, he can't offer the team what they need, then I think he'll probably do something like that too. But I don't think that is up for for me to say as a, as a fan because I want what's best for the team and whatever Mark Boucher decides. Like if I think 
about it as well. I spoke about it. It's time that Pavuma gets some runs, and I'm hoping that this injury is not too serious so that at least he can go back to a country where he's been quite successful. Um, and he can go there and, and, and play with a, with a freedom, um, with a style that will get him on track so that he feels that he can play with that confidence in the World Cup. That's what I'm hoping for. So let's see what happens. Um, but what is your thoughts on that? Do you think it's, it's uh, that, that we should be considering or, Pau, or Pavuma should consider stepping down as captain right now, so close to the World Cup? I think it is no, very risky. Not, not at all. Not at all. I mean, if anything, look, we know that we know that Temba has been struggling. Bauch has said that himself. He acknowledged it. So, and and Temba is smart enough to know that Temba is smart enough to know that he was struggling as well, and he'll, yeah. he'll try to figure a way to to put in the performances. But I don't think Morgan and and Temba can be compared. I think it's two totally different yeah. situations. And also, we have to remember that Owen Morgan has been struggling across formats, across leagues, for a period of time. And he's being he's being found out, you know, technically and mentally. And it's possible that that Morgan doesn't have the fight anymore to to overcome that obstacle because you know he's not the player that he once was. Um, he's just like a specialist captain in the team at the moment. Mm. Uh, so he has the, he, he's he's a World Cup winning captain. He's retiring as a legend, if reports are to believe. To be believed, yeah. um, and uh, Temba, look, Temba scored a hundred against India not too long ago. So in the ODI format, he's he's doing perfectly fine. Now in the T20 format, as a captain, he's been spectacular. There's no doubt about that. Um, you know, and they send a better candidate than him. Uh, but it's just like it's just that one thing, right? Like his his bat is not doing the talking. That's the only thing, and he'll come out of it. Mm -hmm. I see someone. Okay, before I get into the, some of the comments in the in the live chat, there is a Instagram question that we got here, Adisha, that I want us to first debate with you or ask you about. This guy Mohammed forty four wants us to speak about our all time or select our all time South Africa eleven between the two of us. Um, do you want to do this now or do you want to try to do it a little bit later? Oh. Interesting. I tell you what, let's take some of the questions here in the chat. Yeah. And we'll make, we'll answer a couple of questions and then we'll do this between the two of us. Yeah, I think, I think that's, that's a good idea too. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to pick a white ball team. I don't want to say, I don't think a test team. Um, I think across formats, we can pick across formats, you know. Okay. We can do that. All format players. Okay, cool. Yeah. Let's let's go into the comment section and let's see what some of the people have to say. Um, guys, just uh, take a look for uh, keep an eye out for our buyers um, report on the women's game that will be coming up so shortly, um, soon in the next hour or so. Um, we've answered that basically already. Oh no, no, we haven't. Hardit, if England, India, or Sri Lanka defeat Australia, we have a very good chance to play in the finals of the Test Championship and. If we just continue winning our games, we can play in the Test Championship. I think South Africa needs to focus on themselves. I mean, they've gotten a good start to this new Test Championship campaign. And I hope that they can continue this. I mean, England's going to be a difficult one. But I, I don't think that I... I think our players have a good team that can handle the pressure. I, I'm very happy with our Test unit at the moment and how they are. There's going to be another decision that has to be made, of course, and what's going to happen with Aidan Markram. Um, because Aidan is definitely a great test player. Um, obviously, we know he lost his place to um, Saral Irvi after his injury, etc. So, let's see what happens. I'm um, not an injury, actually, the IPL, sorry. It was, it was the IPL. Um, and, um, yeah, we're going to have to wait and see what's going to happen there as well. Um, also, Rassi van der Dissen is another question mark. A lot of people have had about Rassi van der Dissen, maybe, perhaps. Um, although I do think that we've got an abundance of talent that can come into that four-day team, into the test team from the four-day arena. Um, so I'm not really worried about the test so much. Let's see what they do. Um, but 
my attitude won't be to bank on other teams to win games and then to, to fall in place. Mine is South Africa need to make sure that they can win. Because in the Test Championship, and what I like about the setup is the two best teams play each other. And and I think that is what makes it so great. What's your What's your thoughts on that? Look, you are, you want to be in a position where you aren't really dependent on other on other teams, right? So I think if South Africa just need to focus on what they're doing because they have made some serious progress um, in Test cricket. And um, look, if England defeat India, or Sri Lanka defeat Australia, I mean, why do you want to rely on other teams anyway? You know, mm. so just exactly. keep doing what you're doing, and you'll be fine. Mm-hmm. On what basis is Bavuma in the T20 cricket? If he can't deliver, then he should retire. The basis is on his MSL campaign. He had a very good campaign with the Josie Stars captain in the side. And another thing as well is for the Lions, he's taken them to a trophy, actually scoring 100 in the in the final and scoring quite a bit of runs in on the route to the final as well. But that final specifically was the one that, that coined it for him. Um, and I think on that basis, they were looking for an opener that could do a a specific role with Quentin the Cock. That was, that's at least in my opinion, someone that was good on, against spin. We heard what Mark Pouch had to say about what the reasons are that they picked um, Pavuma in the previous video that we did. Um, so, yeah, that's the reasons, I think. Um, but whether he's doing well now or not, that's another debate. Um, I don't want to debate whether he's whether he's earned us opportunity. I think he earned an opportunity by what he's done domestically, but he now has to step up internationally, get his strike rate up, and play the role that Boucher and the team require him to play. And I, and I think we can move on from that. So, I mean, Aditya gave his insight on Bavuma already, and I thought that I don't want him to, to tarnish what he said before. Um. How can selectors pick Pavuma? Likewise, Morgan is a great captain. Can we Brevis open? No, I wouldn't put Brevis as an opener. Um, I think that's ludicrous to, to to put so much pressure on a young guy, no matter how talented he is. I want them to lay a clear pathway for Brevis and tell him, this is how we want you to play. This is what we see your your name. This is how we see your, um, your role in the team. Go out there and play your game. Play with confidence play with freedom and go out there and be the best that you can be and, and do the best that you can. Because I think too much pressure. I don't want to see a situation where we're going to put all the pressure on this 20-year-old when he turns 19, 20, um, on this youngster, and then he has to be the savior, like they did to Aiden Markram, actually, in fact. They brought him through and they made him the savior of South African cricket, and they, all the pressure was on him to take us to the, to the top. Um, and there was so much pressure on him. And I think I don't want to do that same thing to, to, to Brevis. I want Brevis to come in when the team is settled and nicely and winning games. I think that's the best um, way. At the moment, with everything in, in one day cricket is not necessarily coming to the fall. We are, we are not doing well in that, in that, on the run to that, to qualifying. And then you're looking at the T20 arena. We're kind of inconsistent there. So I want to see a, a consistency and a basis for him to come into. I hope that we get a core that he can slip into there so that there's not too much pressure on him only to perform. So I'm hoping that, that that is will be my pathway with him, and and see how he takes pressure, how he pressure uh, get plays against men in the domestic arena. It's a whole different ball game when you're playing every week against men, um, in difficult conditions as well, in a format that you maybe haven't played before. It, it builds character and teaches you life lessons. What's your thoughts on that? Definitely, and there's no hurry, right? Like as you said, with Aaron Markham, there's a lot of pressure on him, and and he was expected to become. You know a certain type of player you don't want that with with uh, with Brevis. you want him to grow at his own pace and um ultimately south africa's best interest is in getting the best out of Brevis. it's not about getting him in as early as possible so mm-hmm. i think that's that's where the focus should be mm-hmm. okay let's move on uh we've got lawrence bailey over here Holly, is it concerning to you that the England Test side are playing the type of cricket we as Saffers want to see our T20 side play? Whether we like it or not, we are, we're going to be left behind with smart cricket. I mean, we stole this from England, actually, the smart cricket idea. 
Owen Morgan came into a press conference. I was in it, sat in front row, and he said it to us. I think um, I can't. I can't remember who actually asked the question. Um, but he said specifically to them that their brand of cricket is smart, aggressive, attacking brand of cricket. But for me, the way he explained it, I put a lot of emphasis on the word smart because it's not just about being aggressive all the time. It's also about being able to be adaptable. So I think that the adaptable part is from the, is where, what they mean when they speak about smart cricket. Um, so when he, when he said that in the press conference um, here in Cape Town, I was I, I started to think about it and I was like, what did, what did they actually mean by smart? And I went around and asked quite a few people. I've asked quite a few coaches. Um, I think I've done quite a few interviews where I've asked them specifically on these interviews whether um, they can explain what smart cricket is. Um, but for me, smart cricket is about reading conditions and then dominating on those conditions. Knowing when to attack, knowing when to hold back, knowing when to to um, find other ways of scoring, knowing when to, to not continue with a specific shot if it's working for you five times in a row. Maybe stop and, and, and try something different. Um, learning how to read the conditions correctly before a game. All of those things are important um, when it comes to smart cricket. But I wouldn't... <sighs> It, it is to a degree concerning because I want South Africa to be doing things that are, how can I say, um, that changes things. Or, or, or what's, what's, what's the word I'm looking for now? Um, I want us to be the ones that that put our foot forward and, and, and show what style we can play and what and, and do what we can do as best as possible and, and have our own way of, of dominating. And I want to see us dominate again. But are you also uh, um, have you also been attracted to this, this style of cricket that they play? They playing. I mean, the way Marazan Cup played today is is very similar in that mold. Look, you do have to play to this situation, right? And ultimately, what really matters is that you get that W against your your team's name. So you have to. So you you do have to play to your strengths, I suppose. And South Africa should obviously do that. You know, I don't think it would be. I think if South Africa, if Dean Elgar scores a hundred playing his way, it's a lot better than him coming out and you know smacking twenty or fifty balls. That's not going to win you games of Test cricket. Um, but having said that, now what has happened is that South Africa is just coming up against tougher opposition because these guys are swinging. You know, the second time in a row, they basically chased down 307 wickets to spare. That is, <laughs> you know, teams normally don't do that. It's it's difficult. So, I think we can talk about style of cricket, but England has a certain DNA. South Africa has its own DNA. It has its own way of playing. Both their South Africa style would not work for England. England's style would not work for South Africa. And I think that's fine, you know, but it's just that South Africa are coming off virtually no test cricket. England have been battle hardened in this three test match series. And I think that's where the advantage is, in my view, because then, you know, by the time the first test match starts, you know, in the press we're going to start talking about, you know, slow starters and, you know, hit the ground running and, all of those things but you know that that is a concern mm -hmm. okay um then we've got german or german shepherd german what am i doing i'm reading it's in different accents here german shepherd oh that could be oh my god i can see sa dropping riza in t20 next series who do you think comes in yeah i would say yanaman I really want to see if Yanaman still has what we need in, in, in this format, um, in the T20 format specifically, as a partner for Quinton de Kock. Um, maybe I've been looking at it differently or wrong, or maybe I've picked up on things that maybe others haven't. I would like to actually see it again and have another go at assessing the partnership and seeing if they can be a progressive partnership and, and put on the pressure if it's not the one the other one goes um 
perhaps that could be an option because I, I do believe that he should have been in this World Cup squad anyway the last time around. He's contracted, as we um, revealed earlier in, in another show. So if they're going to drop Riza Hendrix, I think that the perfect replacement would be then to have Yanaman Milan, a little bit more of an attacking batter on the top that can probably bat deep as well and hold the innings together too. We've seen him do it in the one-day format, and I think that that's the type of style he'll probably play also in the T20 format. Um, although I would have suggested to him because of his power and the, and how, how, how he can smash the ball, I would have told him to take maybe a, a little bit of a Jason Roy approach and go for it. Now, Jason Roy, I know it's great to hear and think about it and see it on paper, but Jason Roy isn't necessarily also very consistent in doing that. Um, I mean, the entire Mzanzi Super League, he didn't perform in both. In, in I think he was in the first one. Or the, and I'm, I don't know if he played in the first one, but in the second one, um, he already played as well. Um, he's been injured. Um, but he does in that maybe three out of ten of them will come off. And, and he can win, can win you three matches on his own, you know? So... Let's see. I mean, I would like to see Yanaman in the back in the squad and where he deserves to actually be, I feel. He does deserve to be at least a backup, minimum. Um, if not, um, one, of the, one of the candidates for the opening position for South Africa. Your thoughts on who should come in? Is there any maybe uh, anyone else maybe that you see left field? No, I mean, it, it, it's only really fair to have Yanaman there, right? Because we remember that when Aaron and Yanaman opened in Quinton and Denver's absence actually did really well. So Yanman is great. Um, but, you know, my, my worry is that there are times when, certainly in ODI cricket, that Yanman can score big. But can he score as fast as we think he can score? Or, you know, can he... Because, look, Yanman takes some time to start off as well, right? You know, he's not the sort of player who can, who can go straight away. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, but he's the obvious choice to me, definitely. Yeah, irrespective. Or, or if you see Riza as a as a top three replacement, you know, someone that can um, replace anybody in the top three, then we could maybe go with someone like a Vian Lerber who can add a bowling option too. I think that's another good shout as well. He's been doing excellently in the white ball arena domestically. And I don't think he's had enough opportunities as for South Africa to show really what he can do. He had basically one game and then he was out of the team. So one or two games, I think, um, and then out of the team. So let's see. Lauren's saying hardly, but there's a difference between smart, aggressive approach England and the smart, conservative approach South Africa. Well, South Africa didn't say they were going to play smart, conservative cricket. They said they're going to play smart, aggressive cricket. So we're just not implementing that aggressive angle of it. Um, and we need to, we need to, if we want to play that style of cricket, I want to start seeing signs of it, you know. And I'm, I was hoping that the last World Cup, being where it was, in the conditions that it was in the T20 arena, I thought that that was the great foundation built for us to be able to take it to the next level, to go and build on that performance and then find that aggressive side. Because I thought they played quite smartly in a lot of the games. Maybe in against Bangladesh when they could have actually up the scoring rate when they were supposed to, to give us an extra bonus point, etc. They didn't do that. That wasn't very smart. Um, but um, from from other areas, I think they've been assessing conditions pretty well, I think, and, and we're getting there. I just want to see... I just think that this particular series against India, I think it was a little bit of a step back because they never uh, decided to be aggressive with regards to their decision-making and style of play that they wanted to play. That that is a that bothered me. Yeah, and it's look. I think what's what's disappointing is that you start off really well, you play the way you want to play for two games, and then you know that doesn't come off third game. I think that third or fourth game, you don't necessarily win you get defeated by your opponent you know and that's quite a challenge in my view because mm-hmm. it's it's more of a you know one step forward two steps back kind of situation then yeah do you think csa will consider Deva maybe for odi since he performed well for SA under 19 in the 50 over um 
yeah, I mean, the 50 over level is a completely different level to international 50 over cricket. So, um, if you guys think he's mat- he's ready, then then I wouldn't I wouldn't mind seeing opportunities given. Um, but I think that South Africa, I don't know what their their plans are in the ODI arena. Um, I don't. I hope they know that there is a World Cup around the corner that we have to qualify for, and that they start putting some serious serious thoughts in place of building a strong unit because we haven't necessarily seen our best unit play together consistently enough. And that's always been my thing about all the formats besides the test arena. We don't see our best players playing in a format con- with a strategy and style and then going in there and saying, look here, we're going to do this. I think India has done it. Now, they've, the second team that they picked against South Africa, they still played with the, with the way that they wanted to play the game if the others were available. And I want to see South Africa do that. Not like you said, Aditya, so many times on previous shows in the last um, two weeks, uh, the fact that you don't want to see one player change the outcome so much, you know? You want to be able to see that one player, if a one player drops out, someone can come in a little bit seamlessly, you know? Um, it doesn't have to, it won't be 100% seamless, but at least it will be slightly, um, slightly tucked in. Uh, so, from your perspective, uh, Aditya, what's your thoughts on that? Um, the, I think the 50 over arena is a nice place for Diego to go and play. Um, I think that I think he has enough time. He'll have enough time in the middle. I think there's a nice core or group of players that he's building there in the ODI side. Um, but I think right now, before 2023 World Cup, I don't know. I, th- I still would like to see him play some domestic cricket in the field, personally. And you also have to consider who's he going to replace in that team. Like if like they want is is a number three batsman, if you replace Rassim and Dusan, are right, you telling me? I don't think so. Um, hmm. And like you know, Rassim and Dusan, the guys averaging what, 60, 70 in ODI cricket. No way you can drop him. He's South Africa's best player, and um, you you don't want to play Daywood at you know five or six either because that's David Miller's position. You know, so at the moment I don't see I don't see a spot vacant to be honest. Mm. And John has a good point here. Daywood hasn't even played a list game in his career yet. How oh, you're already wanting the guy to play 50 over cricket. And I do believe that those systems are in place for a reason. To give people the right pathways and the right um, support going into a national side. You know, fast-tracking people after you've seen them just in a World Cup in an IPL tournament. It's craziness. Um, what about all the people that have that are on the that were on the brink or on the brink of making the side? You know? It's crazy. Um, let's move on. Lauren saying, to be honest, our bowling attack have more firepower than this New Zealand attack. No way we're letting England off the hook, having them 75 for 5, like New Zealand have on a couple of occasions the series. Thoughts? I think you go ahead. <laughs> Look, let's also give credit to England, England's batting. You know, they went out there with the mindset to dominate. You know, and... And if we're being fair, look, let's be completely fair. South Africa have a fantastic bowling lineup, but we know that they don't start off very well. They they perform better as they play more cricket, you know. And we know what happened in that first Test match against New Zealand. So, look, I think New Zealand's bowling attack cannot be underestimated. But having said that, we need to we need to respect the fact that. England played some outstanding cricket. When was the last time SA fast act the player? Look at Pakistan. They wouldn't have Shaheen if, if they don't look beyond the system at times. I think with bowlers is a little bit different though, in my opinion, because that raw pace is like you can't get that raw pace like from anywhere. You know, you either have it or you don't, for example. And that that natural ability and swing emotion, I mean. I've, we've seen more younger bowlers break through, I feel, than maybe younger batters necessarily. Um, 
We've seen flashes from youngsters. I mean, we obviously, Shashin Tendulkar is an exception to the Blumen rule. We can't always go back to that every single time. But South Africa in general haven't necessarily been one, a, a team that consistently gives youngsters opportunities. They do, but once those youngsters have shown their potential that keep them around until they retire, and they've done it with so many, Akalas, Herschel, Graham, um, so many, so many players, um, even able to Villiers to an extent as well you, um, when he came into the team. Um, so what I want to see South Africa do is try and find a way to seamlessly change in transitions. So I would like them to see, I would like to see them when there are senior team players in the team that are nearing the end of their career, maybe they're in their last 10 games, or maybe they, I know it's very difficult for them to be able to tell themselves, okay, last 10 games, but as they're getting towards the end of their career, that is the perfect chance, and they're still getting runs at that time, is the perfect chance for you to bring in a youngster, to learn from them, because they, they're they nearing the end of their career, they're trying to go for milestones, they, get, they can suck up the experience, and suck up the knowledge from the people around them. And I think it's very important that at that stage that we do that. And for me, after the 2023 World Cup, and after this T20 World Cup, I think, and even after this Test Championship, I think, South Africa is going to need to think long and hard about finding a perfect blend of youngsters and the future, and making sure that the older guys retire, that there are people behind them to be able to replace them. Um, um, look, I wouldn't use Pakistan as, as an example because, you know, Im the great Imran Khan once said that, that Pakistan doesn't produce players because of its system. It produces players in spite of its system. So, you know, the, so I think there is, there's a lot of, there's, there's a lot of luck that comes with that. And, um, you know, there's, um, it's not structured is what I'm trying to say. So Shaheen freely being able to make it is great, but it's, it's not because he's had some sort of structure that has allowed him to graduate from one level to the next. Um, uh, and so it's not like Pakistan chose to uh, to sort of sidestep the system and and fast track Shaheen into the national team. That's not how it works in in Pakistan. You know, I think there is a method to their madness, but it is quite a chaotic system. I just want to add um, to that, Aditya, because this is mm -hmm. added to what you are saying now. How come Pakistan produce yeah. more fast bowlers consistently through their system than India? What is your thoughts on that? Look, I, th I think histor historically, yes, and that's a good question. Um, historically, yes, and I think part of it is that it, it, it's a product of the pitches that Pakistan has, has has produced over the years and and India has over the years. And look, I think, you know, even in, in India, our, our heroes have always been batters. In Pakistan, the heroes have always been the bowlers. You know, in Pakistan, like young kids aspire to be Vasi Makra or Wakar Yunus or Shoei Bakhtar. In, in India, you know, the average kid aspires to be Sachin Tendulkar or Virat Kohli or, MS Dhoni. or Rahul David. So, and, sorry? Or MS Dhoni. MS. Yeah. yeah, or MS Dhoni. So, I, I think that, that, that makes a difference. But having said that, if you look at the, over the last, like, three years or so, if if you look at the bowlers that India has produced, mm -hmm. I think they've been like I mean, it's it's hard to argue against the merit of Mohammad Shami or Jasprit Bumrah or now Umrah and Malik, you know. So I think those days are gone where Pakistan is producing far more fast bowlers than India is. Like this IPL was an example of. Uh, of each team, of virtually 10 teams, having at least three fast bowlers who could bowl above 140. And I don't think that's ever happened in India before. Yeah. Raul saying, is Rally Rousseau a comeback possible? I, I hope they at least speak to him. That's what I've said on many shows. They should at least speak to him. I mean, he's been doing his things in T20 cricket recently. 
um, at least they should speak to him. But guys, thanks a lot for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to smash the like button. I'm so happy I got through it. I am struggling a bit, guys. Um, I can feel it. <laughs> I can st- I can feel that I am struggling a bit. But I, I, I love to be back, and I'm, I'm, I'm back again, and we're going to be doing these daily shows as per usual. So I'll see you again all tomorrow. Don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe to everything. Oh, Lawrence asked me, how do I think tra- <laughs> so, so, <laughs> Man United's transfer season has been poor so far. Um, I'm just hoping that they signed a young and that it will kickstart a new regime at United and we can get the rest of our signings going. But, oh, it's been poor. It's been poor so far. It's been nerve-wracking. It's giving me anxiety because all the teams around us are signing players. But, guys, thanks a lot for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to subscribe. Click that notification bell for all future videos. And download the latest issue of Cricket Fanatics Magazine monthly and become a patron today as well. The link is on the screen as well as in the description. Aditya, thanks so much for coming on the show. I'm looking forward to speaking to you the rest of the week as well. For all the fans out there, welcome back. I'm back, guys, and I'm hoping you guys will come to every single show that we do this week. And let's talk cricket again. Um, been out of it for a while, so I'm going to be warming myself up and getting myself back in. Needed a couple of dot balls there, guys, to get myself back into the game. And I'll see you guys again very soon. Take care, everybody. Peace. Peace.